Hello and good morning, future researchers! Kumusta kayo? Welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is me again, Teacher Tin May, ang makakasama niyo sa inyong research journey. And welcome to part 2 of our second vlog in Research 2. Noong nakaraang video, napag-usapan natin ang different characteristics of research at syempre, tandang-tanda nyo pa rin ang ating acronym na SEMLARG para sa uh, characteristics of research. Okay, for this lesson, we're going to talk about the different types of research. Research is a systematic method for the accomplishment of particular goals for the exploration of new findings and advancement of human understanding. Science, in the general sense, refers to the information that humans have obtained through experimentation or information. And study is the process of obtaining these experiences and observations. Research originates from human curiosity or sometimes the need humans feel to seek something. It should be a systematic, understandable, facilitating, innovative, and reconstructive process. Number one is basic research. This is also called as fundamental research or pure research. It seeks to discover basic truths or principles. Here are some examples of basic research. We have Boyle's Law, Charles Law, Archimedes Principle, Hooke's Law Newton's Laws of Motion The Big Bang Theory and Evolution of Man According to Traverse, Basic research is designed to add an organized body of scientific knowledge and does not necessarily produce results of immediate practical value. Now, let us have number two, applied research. Applied research, it answers specific questions aimed at solving practices problems. It is used to find solutions to everyday problems, cure illness, and develop innovative technologies rather than to acquire knowledge for knowledge's sake. Now, let us talk about the different examples of applied research. Number one, we have to improve agricultural crop production. One of the common examples of applied research are the science investigatory projects that you can see in these pictures. In doing science investigatory projects, you're going to create something out of something that will solve and be a solution of a certain problem. And these are examples of science investigatory projects of students from Quezon National High School and Quezon Science High School. And another one we have find cure and vaccine for COVID-19 that is also a product of research. And applied research, remember that this type of research involves seeking new applications of scientific knowledge to the solution of a problem such as a development of a new system or procedure, new device or new method in order to solve the problem. Now let us have the third one, developmental research. 
And the third one, we have developmental research. This is a decision-oriented research involving the application of the steps of the scientific method in response to an immediate need to improve existing practices. The purpose of developmental research is to assess changes over an extended period of time. Now, aside from these three, what are the other types of research? Basic and applied research is also divided into three types of research. We have the quantitative research, qualitative, and the mixed research. Okay, number one, we have quantitative research. This covers elements of the counting and measurement of social life in general. All is inspired by a set of central and predetermined principles in quantitative methodology such as hypothesis, operational description, validity, relevance, statistics, precision, deductive inference, and repeatability. To put it simply, the quantitative research results are the process or the product of rigorous experiments that are conducted using top-down approaches. Okay, number two, we have qualitative research. This typically discusses argumentative explanations, finding social actors, significances, and shifts. This explains daily facts in social life and renders a conclusion that was unknown before doing research or not predetermined by common sense along with inductive explanations and interpretations. Qualitative research is empirical research where the data are not in the form of numbers. And for the last, mixed research, it is a combination of the features of quantitative and qualitative approaches or paradigms. Data is a mix of variables, words, and images. In addition, the purpose of using mixed research methods in one study is not to implement one research instead of the other, but to strengthen the strengths and produce and re and reduce or minimize the limitations of both types of research. Mixed research is a combination of the features of quantitative and qualitative approaches or paradigms. Data is a mix of variables, words, and images. In addition, the purpose of using mixed research methods in one study is not to implement one research instead of the other but to strengthen the strengths and reduce or minimize the limitations of both types of research. What are the other types of research? We also have the exploratory, descriptive, and explanatory. So let us discuss first exploratory research. When we say exploratory research, it functions on the presence of a phenomenon or its absence. It's always trying to find solutions to unanswered issues. Exploratory research can be carried out in many areas and can thus be considered the most versatile and comprehensive form of study. How about descriptive research? When we say descriptive research, the researcher studies the subject's current state and explains and interprets the relevant circumstances and relations. Descriptive analysis, in other words, explores a phenomenon by providing a more comprehensive description and comparing it with other phenomena. The main aim of this form of research is to provide an objective, practical definition of a situation or characteristics of the study or of the subject. And the last one, we have the explanatory research. Explanatory research, it seeks to find relationships between cause and effect among the various variables. It is the analysis of complex ideas and knowledge and the transfer. And of course, the most important purpose of the informative approach is to improve the, the reader's understanding of the subject matter and the research problem through interpreting and synthesizing information 
from various sources to generate document. Okay, that's the end of our discussion. So, sa susunod na discussion natin, we are going to talk about the, the importance of research. Sana may natutunan kayo. So, again, this is Teacher Ting May. See you on my next vlog. Again, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell for more updates and more videos. Goodbye, and thank you for watching.